Welcome everyone. We'll give people a few more minutes to join and then we'll make a start. Welcome everyone. We will give people one more minute and then we will we will start the webinar. Okay, thank you everyone for joining this Outpost 24 Cloud Security webinar today, presented by our Product Manager for Cloud Security, Sergio. Today, Sergio will be discussing the importance of cloud security controls and providing his expert view to help you build a robust cloud operating model. There will be a Q&A session at the end. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into your quest question box in the control panel and we will answer them at the end. Now I'll hand over to Sergio. Thank you, Rebecca. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, this is part of a, a series of cloud security topics, and, and this one is a bit more advanced than the other material uh, I've been doing, uh, but you can find more introductory material and webinars in our uh, website. So this time I will go a, a bit fast on the concepts and trying to get a bit more on the on the guidance and the use cases and so on. Just a bit about uh, Outpost 24. We are headquartered in Sweden, but with a, a global presence today, uh, especially in, in Asia, with, um, with partners and uh, with offices in, in the US uh, and all over, uh, all over Europe. And a bit about myself, uh, working on this cloud security and infrastructure as a service security for, for more than 10 years now, uh, starting with the Cloud Security Alliance uh, and, and some uh, research uh, since, since 10 years now. So go, going to, to the agenda, these are the, the topics I'm going to cover uh, really where to start, first things to, to do, so very focusing on guidance. Uh, we'll talk about the two mouthful uh, things uh, of Gartner on this, the cloud workload protection platforms and cloud security uh, posture management. Uh, then the, the things that uh, security teams must address as soon as they are are using uh, infrastructure as a service. Uh, we'll talk a bit about uh, tooling from cloud providers, special well, security tooling, and then uh, the future work and where we are heading to. So, first thing, really. Oh, when migrating to infrastructure and platform as a service, um, it's really to understand this shared responsibility model. I will go back to, to this topic, but at the end, let's assume that we need to trust the cloud provider. And uh, as Gartner says, uh, usually the problems arise from misconfigurations and bad usage of um, of the cloud services is not amazon web services fault or uh, microsoft azure fault or google clouds fault it's really the usage and uh, it's 
it's pretty easy, it's pretty accessible, uh, and there are a bit of lack of skills on this. And uh, um, now, you know, networks that mean uh, sometimes get get configurations right, and that's usually where the the, the problem begins. And when we ask organizations uh, what are the major cloud security challenges, it, it's really about this lack of skills and uh, security admins that are very used to, to physical networks and data centers and so on. They get a bit lost on these uh, public cloud services. And the, 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 so where goes this poor configuration? What are the best uh, security practices when uh, using things like containers, but it can be virtual firewalls and the, the, the components of infrastructure security. And APIs are, are tricky as well. Uh, we are not used to, to have APIs that can control everything. So we need really to put access control in place so that the, we can control and actually log what is going on at the API uh, level as well. So these are the top three. Then there are the, the, I will recommend the, uh, the SANS Cloud Adoption Survey from, from last year, uh, where you can uh, go a bit deeper on these um, on these challenges and what we are seeing in the in the, in the market today uh, it's really this cloud maturity uh, that it's very important to, to see where uh, your organization is uh, before trying to tackle the, the security so usually we start with a security assessment or what kind of of services you are using what kind of data you are processing in the cloud and uh, usually the compliance comes a bit after thought uh, when you are oh uh, now i'm i'm doing this uh, uh, marketing analysis uh, of our customers data uh, maybe i should take care of the, the protection of this uh, critical data and so on. So uh, I would say a lot of people start to think uh, on security on this uh, step on compliance. What we are seeing in our customers is that, especially in large organizations, is that the uh, different business units have different requirements and they choose different cloud providers and uh, at the end uh, just to give an example if you are doing machine learning and you are a big fan of tensorflow then uh, usually you go for google cloud if you are on on, on the edge uh, and you you know and you want to use more services then maybe uh, amazon web services is the one that has uh, more services and so on. So uh, at the end here, the challenge, it's really about how to uh, have the same controls uh, along these different cloud providers that have different scopes, different services and so on. And the final step, and especially for people for organizations that do not have legacy, the goal is to automate everything, and that's great with uh, with cloud infrastructure, with the APIs, with infrastructure as code, and so on. You can really automate everything so that uh, you have alerts when uh, misconfigurations are uh, are there, and so on. And this is where most uh, mature uh, organizations who we are seeing them on, on on this part so i will use this uh, cloud maturity adoption to give a bit of guidance because it's it's different when you are just starting and when you are really about uh, automating everything 
So the two mouthful uh, acronyms from from Gartner, uh, the the blue part that is the responsibility of the um, of the enterprises using infrastructure as a service called cloud workload protection platforms. This is not brand new. Uh, you need to take care as before the security of your applications, think uh, uh, SQL injections, cross-site scriptings, and so on. And you need to do vulnerability management, for instance, for the operating system part. So no outdated uh, libraries on your operating system and so on. And the fact that you are using um, cloud services, th that does not relieve you of doing this workload part. The, I would say the new part is really this um, cloud security posture management. That basically is the configuration assessment of your cloud services. Just to give an example, very simple. Uh, you have security groups on Azure uh, or Amazon uh, and Google as well. Uh, that basically are firewall, virtual firewalls. And you need to get these firewalls co configured, things like getting a SSH or RDP open to to internet that are not are not best practices, right? So this is the part that is um, important to keep in mind. Always these two things, and I will go a bit more into detail on on th these two things. Okay, so you deploy your your workloads. You still need to do vulnerability management, application security. And on this control plane, as Gartner puts it, this is another uh, picture from Gartner, you, you need to get your identity and access management configuration right. So users and what are uh, uh, what rights they have to do or permissions. The network configuration storage, do you enable encryption? Uh, what is the access control for this? Mm. Having buckets with uh, critical data uh, open to, to everyone in the internet usually gets in, in the news like Capital One and other. And the administrator access is very important as well. So if you have um, users that can spin out uh, virtual machines that, that can create an, other users and so on, just like before, you, you need to uh, really protect this, uh, uh, this level of accounts. So, a bit more concrete and less conceptual uh, uh, on the cloud security posture management, really the first thing to do is to implement the CIS benchmarks so that there is one for, uh, for each cloud provider. And these are really the a good starting point to, to address this uh, configuration assessment on, on your um, security operations. For the transition and being able to do the workload uh, security as you were doing before in your data center and when you start to do hybrid or multi-cloud, um, I, I would recommend the uh, to use the, the NIST framework, the cybersecurity framework, and I will get back to this in a, a bit more detail uh, uh, right after the, the CSPM checks. Just to give uh, for, for people that never looked at the, the CIS benchmark, actually it's pretty basic stuff, I would say. Uh, for instance, the Amazon one are 49 checks that you can completely automate uh, with the API or buy a product for, for doing this, um, or using Amazon Web Services Security Hub uh, as well that now implements these checks. 
and it concerns identity uh, access management, logging, monitoring, and networking. So not all the more than 160 different services of, of Amazon, but the foundational ones that, uh, that are there, best practices, very easy to, to, to implement and to automate. So really, uh, the first thing when, when you, are, you are using Amazon. Azure is a bit more complete. It came a, a bit later on. Uh, currently, uh, almost 100. You security tool, uh, the accounts of storage, the SQL services, and so on. So these are really the foundation uh, services, and the, uh, I would say the, the standard that you you should start with when you are migrating or in a first level of, of compliance. And uh, I, I just took some some examples from uh, Amazon on the left side and. Uh, Azure on the on, on the right side, and the, just just to give you a, a concrete example, for instance, well, S3 buckets access should be logged so that at least you can see if something is wrong, if uh, a lot of accesses are being done through the internet. Maybe that's a, if it's not a public website, maybe uh, the, there is room to at least investigate and, and see if uh, this is normal or not. And um, on the Azure side, uh, simple things like uh, secure uh, transfer required, meaning well, the encryption on the data in transit and so on. These are really the foundational uh, controls you should put uh, in place for the cloud configuration part or CSPM uh, using the Gartner terminology. Then when you start to implement these, uh, these controls, the, the problem that or the challenge that comes after is, oh, you have a lot of findings and uh, if you have a, a big infrastructure and a lot of uh, networks uh, in your Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud uh, platform, then you start to have a lot of findings, especially at the beginning when uh, you, you are just starting and so on. And it, it, this is a hard challenge because there is no scoring like CVSS. Uh, the only uh, thing that is on the CIS benchmarks is score than not score. And of course, the uh, Azure, taking it as an example, as its own scoring, this can help you to, to do prioritization of your findings. Um, but at the end, without putting a, a bit of effort on uh, adding context to your infrastructure and uh, uh, usually using tags to, to tag your most critical assets can be networks can be databases and so on uh, it's pretty hard to to do this um, this prioritization so uh, as guidance the when you start building uh, your infrastructure keep in mind to tag everything and especially when it's uh, processing critical data or customer data or PII data, uh, tag it so that we can concentrate uh, uh, the our um, remediation efforts on these critical parts, right? And um, what is missing on, on these uh, CIS benchmarks? Um, they are a good, uh, a good starting point, but then where you will find uh, weak spots is really on the, if you are in, uh, using more advanced services. I, I was talking about TensorFlow, 
um, to, for instance, if you are using uh, MapReduce on Amazon and so on, currently there are no best practices for that kind of services. So uh, at a later stage on maturity uh, adoption, you can find these uh, benchmarks uh, pretty basic. But again, first thing to do then, if you are using a, a more advanced services, then there are uh, solutions and there are vendors that give you guidance on, on these more uh, advanced services. But start by the, the CIS benchmarks and start because the, at the end they cover these foundational services. Uh, with networking, with compute and storage and uh, user management as well. So focusing on the foundation, the, the CIS benchmark, then you can um, evolve to more advanced checks on more advanced services. Now I'm switching to the workloads part. Uh, so we were uh, a lot concentrating on the configuration assessment part. On the workload part, I, I really like this, this study uh, done by Summit Institute last year, uh, where they used the, the cybersecurity framework from the uh, from the NIST, identify, protect, detect, respond, and uh, recover. That you all know, and uh, they classified. The, the things you should uh, start with, and I would recommend as guidance to, to start with the identify part uh, here for your, your workloads, the configuration, the system management, vulnerability assessment, and, uh, and so on. And then you can go over uh, uh, the other security um, processes that you are already in place and put them together uh, or extending them to, to the cloud. One thing uh, uh, you should avoid since the start is to have different tools that cover on-premise and that cover cloud because this will bring um, security gaps, uh, different skills that are needed, so different training and so on. So, uh, really uh, think about using existing tools and existing uh, extending them to to the cloud. Most part of the um, the vendors now support uh, hybrid infrastructure, so this should not be a, a, an issue. But do, do not start using different tools because later on it will be uh, much harder to to manage and not cost efficient. Gartner has a, a different uh, approach and uh, act for the cloud workload protection platforms. Actually, they did this pyramid where the, the really um, critical controls are at the bottom. Of course, they start by operations, hygiene, and uh, identity and access management, the access control, and so on. And the, the, then the configuration and vulnerability management, the networks uh, segmentation, and so on. So if you are in the process of extending your workloads uh, protection to the cloud, uh, start by focusing on these core server protection strategies, and then you can um, really go for the, the more optional uh, server, as uh, Gartner uh, puts it. So we, we have covered the, and I, I went uh, a bit fast on this because this is a more uh, advanced uh, webinar, um, talked about the two things, workload protection, uh, configuration assessment. I uh, already gave, um, or gave a, uh, a lot of guidance, but I will go a step further on this. 
oh, if we go to the root of the problem, um, traditional security is really you know, the there is rapid by by the cloud. There is this shared responsibility. So the two things you need to keep in mind that the CWPP and um, CSPM part. And then there are more um, uh, challenges that come from elasticity, the, the changing IP, sometimes the license model, because it's so easy to spin out new, new services. Uh, this uh, brings shadow IT or um, cloud sprawl as well. And uh, another thing that I uh, we are always seeing in uh, our customers is that while well, the DevOps start using the last uh, a cloud service that was um, announced last week by. Uh, here I have a, just um, a screenshot. For instance, only on uh, storage, you see we have uh, eight options. And it, it's very hard to keep up with the security practices for these different uh, services, even if it's, it's storage, right? And uh, of course, there are more than 160 today only on Amazon. Database as well, you have a bunch of, of different approaches depending on you are doing relational or graph databases or whatever. So it, it, it's very hard for security teams to keep up with all this jargon uh, uh, for the start and then to have uh, security practices that uh, goes with these services. A lot of things are traditional, like well, access control, administration rights, and so on. But sometimes gets a, a, a bit more trickier, like setting up encryption and, and so on. And one thing that uh, it's important to remember is the API access uh, as well. So control, uh, giving visibility, enabling logs, but generating alerts based on that logs and so on. So this is the, the real challenge uh, security teams are uh, facing today. And of course, it's not only one provider. What we are seeing today in the market is that you know, uh, here are numbers from the, the suns and of course, all these big numbers on, on cloud, that's because it includes uh, software as a service as well. But if we focus on infrastructure as a service, it's very often um, organizations are using one or two uh, cloud providers, uh, usually Amazon and Azure, sometimes Google, and these are the, the top three, right? Uh, but you need to prepare for this multi-cloud scenario and being very good on, on Amazon web services controls and then having your TensorFlow uh, data unprotected on Google, then well, uh, hackers will uh, choose, of course, to, uh, to go for, uh, for Google Cloud on, on that part. And multi-cloud brings a, another um, another challenge for the security controls. You need to have visibility. You have to to have some um, the same controls all over the the place and the different cloud providers. And this sometimes is tricky, as I have shown you. For even the CIS benchmarks, they are. Uh, different between the cloud providers, more checks, more services, and so on. Uh, giving the example between uh, Amazon and uh, Azure I gave you before. So back back to guidance uh, again, um, and uh, using always these uh, these two um, two layers 
or workload protection. First thing to do is to extend the existing tools. Um, important thing here, it's to check for your deployment model. And sometimes organizations prefer to deploy agents, especially on when they are not always connected. Uh, and this an example of uh, road warriors with uh, uh, with endpoints, for instance. Uh, some organizations prefer appliances, other software as a service. So here um, you have to choose the right tool that uh, that fits your your deployment model. But uh, most part of the workload protection um, tools that were around well, with us outposts, we focus a lot on vulnerability management and application security. These um, are completely integrated with Amazon Azure uh, and Google Cloud so that you, you have your vulnerability management program. You can easily extend it in a hybrid um, in infrastructure. On the, well, I, I'm repeating a lot this, but the, uh, for the cloud configuration part, first thing to do is the CIS benchmarks, trying to get it uh, everything uh, green, that's perfect. Uh, perfection is always tricky. So um, accepting some risks, maybe there are some uh, networks and VLANs that are that have no critical data on it that are more testing so maybe you can accept uh, a bit of red on that uh, on that part but start to implement seriously the the controls all over the place uh, not getting some blind spots or oh, because oh i do not have access to this um to this uh, account on azure or I do not have permission to see everything. It's very important to, to cover all the perimeter and having a full access. And when I'm talking about full access, I'm talking about uh, having all the infrastructure, but mainly to have visibility about what is going on. And this usually requires only read only access and access to the logs and so on so we can set up um, a user that has read only access so that it can read the configurations the cloud configurations through the api and then access if they are following uh, best practices a good starting point if you never tried out it's really to do a one-time assessment and to get um, a report on a first um, subset of your infrastructure and to evaluate your uh, security posture. This can be done uh, in, in less than 30 minutes, for instance. Another point of the agenda is, OK, the uh, you, cloud providers give you uh, security tools as well that uh, you can use for for protecting your your workloads and even to do the the configuration assessment um, azure especially has a, a very um, big push towards the azure security center where they want to to put uh, everything together concerning uh, security one of the funny things is that the CIS benchmark is not yet uh, complete. They only cover 20% of it uh, today. But the, without going into details of each of the services, the thing to keep in mind is that in a multi-cloud scenario, then these tools are not really adapted. So if you are 100% Azure, maybe you can get um, through using 
um, Azure Security Center, but if you are using Amazon as well, then these tools do not work. And of course, if you are in a hybrid scenario, you will uh, have limitations on, on these tools as well. So um, look at them, uh, see if they, uh, they answer your security requirements, but in hybrid and multi-cloud scenarios, this can be always a challenge. And there is um, a study from, from Garter yet again uh, on the comparison of these, um, these controls and these tools. Uh, actually, it has been done almost two years ago and a lot of things changed since uh, two years, but it's still a good read um, on the coverage of all the controls and uh, what are the, the differences between Amazon Azure and, uh, and Google Cloud uh, on, on these and to let you or to help you on seeing if the uh, the cloud provider tools will cover all your security requirements. Next point in the agenda, it, it what's really well, what's next, uh, right? We let's suppose we are prepared and we deploy the CIS benchmark, we extended the workload protection. Um, to, to my cloud workloads as well. Uh, I, I answer to compliance through the CIS benchmarks. I'm in a, a multi-cloud uh, setup. What's next? And this is a, uh, a great picture I love. It's, well, technology usually goes much faster than, than security and then we need to keep up with the, with the pace of it. And here, the, uh, my guidance on this uh, part is really to evaluate what kind of workloads you are moving to the cloud. This again is a um, a picture from from Gartner, uh, and what is important is this data sensitivity uh, and the, if you are sharing this with the with your all your organization, only small subsets of your organization and so on. So uh, in order to do this, um, what's next is to, to evaluate what kind of workloads you are using, what kind of data you are putting in the in cloud infrastructure. Um, as we are seeing today, and this is a survey from Sun's Institute, um, a big use case is around business intelligence. Uh, organizations have a lot of data and they want to, to get out more value from this data, but usually this data is customer data, so a critical one. And it's important to map this uh, criticality of, of, of data and to, to implement the right security controls that go with it. And it can be encryption, it can be uh, encryption uh, during data transfer and so on. So. And then, uh, as I was saying before, um, your dev, especially on the DevOps team, um, we start using more advanced services like machine learning, TensorFlow, MapReduce, and so on. And here it's it's really um, first thing, of course, it's foundations right, but then we we get off the beaten track and um, just some considerations around it. Um, maybe agents are not the best deployment models, especially if you are using serverless and function as a service, for uh, for instance, just to give um, an example. There are hundreds of um, 
new cloud services. So uh, not always easy to, to find the best practices on this. I, I would recommend uh, to the Cloud Security Alliance is usually are the ones that have most um, advanced research on, on, on these topics. Um, and sometimes just just to give you an example of map reduce uh, there is uh, great guidance from from Cloudera and Orton works the guys really that implement this and these uh, security best practices still applies to uh, elastic map reduce on Amazon just to to give an example oh. and uh, of course, the, the providers um, are always a step behind on, on security best practices. So, as I was saying, for MapReduce, uh, uh, Cloudera, uh, and, uh, and Orton Works uh, already add security practices that you can use to address these, uh, these more advanced services. Final slides and getting back to the cloud maturity uh, adoption. Um, on, on, on the first phase, I'm trying to wrap up everything I've said. Uh, when you are migrating, it's important that you migrate your security controls. So this applies to the workloads you are moving. You are doing vulnerability management on. On-prem, you need to extend this program to to the cloud, and this can, of course, be done with uh, with existing tools. Um, on this second step, the, the compliance step, that's where the the cloud security posture management or configuration assessment is important. The CIS benchmarks now. Uh, and to prepare for multi-cloud so that you have a single solution that gives you visibility and guidance for Amazon, Azure, and Google without having three different tools with three different sets of findings that you need to prioritize somehow. And, and the good thing about cloud APIs, you can automate really anything uh, for instance when you deploy a new virtual machine you can use the api to discover it to for instance scan it or do vulnerability management on it or application security and put all your tickets on jira or service now or whatever everything using the apis this is where we see the most mature organizations going on uh, to. So, uh, to wrap up what I've just said during the, the webinar, follow the data, follow the workloads, what kind of um, data you are putting in the cloud, what kind of workloads you, you are putting there. This is really the, the first thing, it's um, GDPR data and so on. Uh, and then implement your, or extend your workload security to the cloud, address the cloud configuration assessment, and handle hybrid and prepare for multi-cloud. For easy steps, of course. Uh, and a, be, a bit of uh, publicity and uh, about us, uh, of course, we provide vulnerability management, application security, and cloud assessment uh, on, on the same platform in a hybrid uh, scenarios. So I'll be happy to um, to tell you more about our solutions that we call full stack because we support application security, cloud security, the topic I was focusing on, our CloudSec product line, and we provide wireless 
to our Pony Express acquisition and network security that is vulnerability management. Thank you for listening and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Sergio. And thanks to the audience for listening there. We'll go ahead and take some questions now from the audience. Um, just to remind you, you can um, send your questions through the control panel there on your screen. Um, Sergio, it looks like we've got some questions already coming through for you. Um, first question, is there a simple way to deploy security controls across multi-cloud? Um, well, we have a product for that, but uh, uh, well, like our competitors as well, uh, today, the, the CIS benchmarks are really the, the standard to, to follow. And the, the, the important thing is that your uh, configuration assessment uh, is done um, using these, these benchmarks on all the cloud providers you are uh, using. And concerning the workload part as well, most part of the tools uh, of the security solutions today um, address uh, at least the, the big three, Amazon Azure and, um, and Google Cloud. So you will not have uh, a lot of difficulty to, to integrate your existing security program on one hand, so the workload part, and to do the configuration assessment with um, with security solutions available in the market. Then the, the gap is that the CIS benchmarks have different scopes uh, today. For instance, uh, Google uh, focus a lot on, on Kubernetes. So they are very well covered if you, if you use um, Google Cloud under the CIS benchmark. You are using Kubernetes or containers on Amazon. Uh, today, they are not covered on CIS benchmark. So, this I would say it's the the challenge. Start with the the, the benchmarks with your existing solutions, and then fill the gaps uh, according to the cloud services you are using. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, and then finally, um, you mentioned about the CIS benchmarks and that the providers only cover 20% of that. When do you think they will be able to cover the majority of those? Well, the, they have been moving fast and here uh, talking about Azure, uh, Azure Security Center appeared like um, two years ago and now there is a lot of things. They, they start to implement 20% of the CIS benchmark. You know, with Microsoft, there is always a bit of legacy, uh, some APIs that uh, that need to be changed, a part that is PowerShell, a part uh, that needs Active Directory services and permissions. So sometimes gets a bit messy because there, uh, there is a lot of, of uh, legacy uh, that comes from Microsoft Active Directory permissions and so on, and not having a REST API very clean uh, to, to address all to these um, uh, security controls, but they, they are really moving fast. I would expect that in the next couple of years uh, to have uh, the CIS benchmarks there and much more that, that will come uh, after because well, cloud providers are really doing a, a big push on, on cloud security. The remaining cha challenge will, uh, for the moment, is really the, the multi-cloud uh, setup. They are adding to supporting the different clouds as well but i would say that it's it's uh, early days on on that side and the, it will take um i'm guessing a couple of years to have um, cloud providers having 
uh, as well coverage of uh, multi-cloud scenarios. Thanks, Sergio. We've, uh, we've had a late uh, question in here actually for you, finally. Um, thank you for this. Um, so the question for you is, do you think by just following CIS benchmark for AWS will make things secure and support maturity? That's a great question. And uh, 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 as I was uh, saying, uh, repeating myself a lot of times, it's a good starting point. It's a bit basic. And uh, you, if you are an advanced user, you will feel like mm, that that is not enough. Uh, so first thing, implement it. Get everything green if possible. Accept the risk for the, uh, the less critical parts. Then uh, you, you need to rely on more uh, advanced security solutions if you are using um, uh, more advanced services. I keep giving this example of machine learning or when you are... Oh. To give another example, uh, last year we had a lot of this elastic uh, search um, servers or Redis that were were open to the internet and a, a lot of data leakage uh, came from from there when you start using new services and especially they are not covered by your cis controls then uh, it's usually uh, these um, blind spots where the the problems come from but here you have more uh, advanced security vendors that are focusing on these uh, new services and, of course, updating um, security controls to these new security services. So I'll be very happy to, um, to hear a bit more about the, the use case, what kind of service you are using, and then uh, we can talk about guidance on on this part because uh, there are more than 160 uh, today only talking about Amazon. So each one is is a bit different. Perfect. Thank you, Sergio. Thanks to the audience for your questions today. It looks like we've Thank wrapped you. up um, the session. Um, for now. So thank you everyone for listening and thanks to Sergio for presenting this webinar. Um, we will circulate the slides and the recordings afterwards. So thanks everyone for joining us today and we will see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, everyone.